that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go home to Bethlehem and Judah, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the villas of Nazareth and Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angel has returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem, let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what happened and what the angels had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Merry Christmas! Um, it's my hope that today uh, that you'll have some time, spend time with friends, spend time with family. Um, it's a wonderful season, giving gifts, um, remembering um, great things in the past. Um, it's my hope today uh, that we don't forget um, the reason that, that we even celebrate Christmas in the first place. And as we just heard um, the Christmas story being read, um, God sends His Son down into the world uh, to be born um, in, in very lowly circumstances. And if you keep reading through scripture, you see how that, that child grows up and becomes uh, our savior. And um, just one thought I wanna leave um, with us today is um, found in John 3, John 3, 16 and following. Now John 3, 16 is a verse that many of us have heard before and a lot of us might even have memorized um, but I want to read um, what follows from that as well. And because this is the Christmas story, this is the reason behind the Christmas story. And we see in John 3 that Jesus is talking to a man uh, named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus wants to know um, who Jesus is. And Jesus starts talking about this idea called being born again. And that we can't get into the kingdom of heaven without being born again. And, and Nicodemus wants to know how. And Jesus says these things to Nicodemus. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And so we see here a few things that Jesus comes down, the Christmas story happens because God loves the world so much. He loves us so much. Um, and he knew that we needed a way for forgiveness, a way to be saved, a way to get to heaven. And so he sends Jesus to this earth um, as out of his love that we wouldn't perish, but we would have eternal life. And Jesus didn't come into this world to condemn us, um, Jesus continues to say, um, but the reason why is because the world is already condemned. We are already in need of a savior. Um, Jesus wouldn't have come to this earth if everything was fine and if we didn't need help, but we needed help so desperately. 
And so Jesus came to this earth to offer us salvation, to offer us hope. And amidst in that hope um, that we can cele truly celebrate Christmas. Now, um, the way that, that we accept this hope is to admit our sin, to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for all the things that I've done. And to believe in him, believe in his name, believe that he's the son of God, that he died on the cross and rose again. And then to confess him as our Lord, confess him as our Savior, um, to follow him. God says that, that he'll forgive us, that our sins will be made clean, and that we will be in the kingdom of God. And that's the true meaning behind Christmas. Christmas is tied to Easter. And um, Jesus came to this earth that he might die and come back to life and to offer us a hope. And so it's my hope on Christmas Day um, that we you know, praise God for sending Jesus to this earth um, to be that hope. But we also remember that he came to die and to come back to life and to thank him for that as well. Let me pray for us. Um, God, we thank you for sending Jesus to this earth uh, to, to live a perfect life, to die on that cross and to come back to life that we might have hope, that we might have forgiveness, that we can be in your kingdom, we can be in your family. Um, God, we pray that we would remember that today. And so Jesus, let me pray. Thank you.